Hello everybody, Stinky Scrublet here, and today we're looking at another blockchain NFT game. Today's game is Lost Relics. This runs on the engine cryptocurrency, and uh, this game kind of plays like Diablo or Torchlight. And yeah, you can find blockchain items, as you can see this bow here I found, and it was a blockchain item. The way this game works, when you go in an adventure, you will lose all the items in your inventory when you die unless they are indestructible, aka blockchain items. So, it's best to try to, you know, find the drops of blockchain items, but you can always buy other items with gold that you may lose when you die, but if you're not going to die, it doesn't really matter. So, we can look at the adventures here, and as you can see, there's, um swords next to the adventures and also um, skill logos so the first level you uh, it's the easiest level and you can mine on it and other levels you can see there's gathering and uh, woodcutting uh, fishing and they all have their difficulties so why don't we try out the first level um, a lot of people in this game, the biggest thing about starting this game is the first level is really tough for people. And the thing is, it's not as tough as it seems, it's just uh, playing correctly. So let's run through the first dungeon so I can give you a couple of hints. As you can see, I only have the starting items here. I bought a little bit of bread because you can actually um, craft bread for pretty cheap early on in the game. I believe shows you how to do that so but um, you really don't need uh, any food for the first level but I do recommend maybe bringing some food if you don't feel comfortable uh, just in case you have an item or you just want to survive uh, and get used to it your first time maybe bring food but um, you really don't need it but I brought some food, uh, for example, here. And uh, the biggest thing, this is the biggest thing about beating the Forgotten Chambers, the first level. Don't step on these pads here. As you can see, the stone is a little bit different on this little area here. And if I step on it, it catches me on fire and it'll do uh, 50 damage multiple times over time. And that will destroy your health. Because when I first started playing, I didn't realize the pressure plate was there. I was kind of just running through. So avoiding those pres pressure plates are the biggest difficulty uh, on the first stage. So when you're in the game, you have two types of weapons. You have a sword, or sorry, a melee weapon and a ranged weapon. And both of the weapons have two different attack types. There's a strong and a weak. So if you just do a normal click on an enemy, that's the weak damage, and it uses none of your uh, energy, but if you use the right click, it seems to be a little bit over, maybe, I'm not sure, let's see if it tells us, yeah, 52 damage normally, and 192 damage uh, with the power damage, so it's a huge increase, so I recommend um, using the bow all the time, because you can, uh, if you hold shift, you'll stay in place, and you can shoot from a distance. And another big tip I want to give you, if you go to settings, into controls, the um, camera rotate is normally on the left and right arrow keys. I recommend changing it to A and D. Uh, it's a lot more natural. I'm not sure why you would use the arrow keys and the mouse at the same time. Does not seem like a good choice, but hey, what are you, what are you gonna do? So running through here basically uh, hitting just hitting every enemy with the right click because uh, when you start out you have that weak bow so I recommend just right clicking literally every enemy and then we'll come through here and we'll see our first skill that we can interact with which is our mining up here you can look at your skills you and see all the different levels um, and then there's also the skills book so you can see what you're able to do 
I'm only uh, level 5, but as you can see, as you level up, um, you have a chance at getting different items. And they can get pretty expensive, so, you know. Good way to make gold is getting your skills up and harvesting. So, let's continue. So you can always back up, gain some distance, and uh, just right click them. <laughs> I'm nowhere near the best at this game. I am pretty new as well, but at least I have a little bit of an understanding of the way the game works. So things like the first level are quite easy, and I think you'll agree with me as well. Maybe your first few runs might be a little tough. When I first started this game, I was actually not doing the best. Um, I mean, I could beat this level, but then I got the next items, which are the green items that you can buy from the general store with gold, and I've lost them uh, probably three times, but ever since, <laughs> I don't know, after I died so many times, I kind of learned, and I don't really die anymore in the game, but yeah, it's pretty tragic early on if you're not really understanding the difficulty of the game or the traps because you might want to rush ahead and you might lose your items it's good to understand hey there's fire like these have little vents that repeatedly um, send fire through and then they go away and you just have to wait for the fire to go away to pass that but as you can see the first level is pretty easy as long as you take your time uh, every once in a while, back up and get some distance to avoid damage. Um, there's also energy potions and uh, different types of, like, um, I guess, like vegetables that you can find uh, that you can regenerate your energy. Just so you can get through the levels a little quicker, uh, just continuously using the right click. Uh, but since stakes are low, you know, we're playing on um, the first level. I'm not going to worry about bringing the energy potion. Just so we can get through here. So using the bow, keeping your distance. Um, and using that right click when possible is the way to go. Clear these little rats up. And see what we have ahead. I see even sometimes I walk into the fire, so I just did that right there. Maybe continue. Get some more mining in. And at any time, you can find a blockchain item. Chances are I'm not going to find them because they're quite rare. Um, but sometimes you can kill an enemy and they drop a blockchain item. You can um, open a chest and find blockchain items. So it's really um, a lot of chance. I don't know if it's true. Um, people in the chat in the game say that when an update comes out that you have a higher chance of finding items because there's more available. And as time goes on, those items from the update you know, are obviously being found, so as time goes on, um, it becomes harder to find those blockchain items. So, I don't know, maybe it sounds like the best time to play is right after an update? I'm not sure. But once you find the door, and on the map there's a green, or sorry, a, a blue triangle, and you can see this overlay map by hitting tab. I like to keep it up at all times. So, we finished our first level, didn't take too much damage, and if it's your first time playing a map, you will have a, uh, a daily reward uh, ready to go. Um, basically, if you log in um, multiple days in a row, you keep earning rewards. If you miss a day, it'll reset back to the first one. So I've been playing for four days in a row, we get a potion pack, boom. That's really good. 169 gold, 61 gold, 32 gold, 189 gold. 
Um, me personally, I look at things like that to sell because there's much cheaper items that you can use for healing. So, once you make quite a bit of money, uh, you might want to run the uh, first dungeon a few times, and then you'll have a decent amount of money, and you can come over to the general store and purchase the green weapons, and with that you'll be able to take on the next level. So, pretty nice. And, um... There's also an Emporium, which is kind of like, have you ever played RuneScape? They have the Grand Exchange. This is very similar. You can come in here and see all of the virtual items. That means non-blockchain items um, that are for sale. And these are all players selling their items. So what's common is people come into here, find something like the Harvest Hopper, because it's very cheap, but it also heals quite a bit of health, 300 health for only 19 gold. You can come in here and get your gold, maybe you even want some energy potions. There's also um, effect items like um, the Goodman Goggles, uh, which allows you to see from uh, very far away like enemies and see more of the map. Uh, this is the the feeble ring of rejuvenation was also available in the general store, but it heals you heals you up to 700 health, um, and then it doesn't disappear after you use it. And while you're in here, you can also look at the blockchain items. You can see the blockchain items you own, and you can see the other things, like all the weapons in here. Uh, weapons tend to be on the blockchain. Um, as you can see, there's two weapons here for sale in gold, but they're crazy expensive. So yeah, this is um, the game here. I didn't show any of the fishing or the cooking or the um, the uh, ooh, ooh, engineering. Sorry, my brain fart. And then there's also alchemy down here. Uh, that you can uh, create potions and all that. So, I tried to show most of the stuff that I could. I will say one more thing about quests. Um, you'll have a few starter quests, and I think after level 5, this character here will open up bounties. Um, and you can earn a currency where you can uh, get some really nice items. So... Yeah, you can go in here and get your bounties. I've done a few. Sadly, the harder bounties are obviously harder because some of them may require blockchain items and that's going to be a tough find. So, anyways guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, I know a lot of people have a lot of trouble getting through the first adventure. So if you're one of those, I hope, hope this helped you out. And I hope you guys find a blockchain item. Thank you guys for watching so much. Have a great day.